Today I am jumping on the tin can trend and sharing ways you can upcycle them into fun home decor. Most of what I've seen going around is farmhouse, which is not my style, so instead we're taking the more boho modern approach. For the first one, I'm using this Craftsmart polymer clay from Michaels. After working the clay and making it pliable, I'm using an extruder to create long spaghetti-like pieces. An extruder is not necessary to create this project. You can absolutely use your hands and roll the clay out like a snake. Next, I cut down the strings into four five inch long pieces and taking two pieces at a time, I twisted them in the direction away from me. You wanna make the twist pretty tight without breaking the clay. So using your hand, gently roll in opposite directions. This will make the twist tighter while slightly stretching it and making it longer. Then take the next two pieces and twist in the opposite direction going towards you. Now bring the two pieces together and again, gently squeeze them together. You don't wanna alter the shape since the clay is very warm at this point. Now I grab the tin can. This is a small size one, but you could use any size and place the clay onto the can. Each braid I created was enough for two rows on the can and I switched the direction. This helps with the illusion of a knit sweater look and repeat this covering the entire can with the braids. To cover the edges where the braids end, I rolled out a slightly thicker piece and wrapped one around the bottom and two around the top, and then stuck it in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes to harden the clay. After 15 minutes, I turn the oven off, but leave the piece inside to cool down gradually, and this helps with durability. Once it was cooled down, I painted the clay white. This did take several coats because I wanted all of the little gaps to be filled in, and that's it for this one. This next one is the easiest. Taking this flat reed that I got from Amazon, which someone had told me was faux reed. I don't even know what faux reed is, but this works just fine for me. I cut it down to wrap around the tin can. And then using my favorite Starbond super glue, glued each piece. I only added glue to each end and that was all that was needed for this project. I also have all of my favorite Amazon products linked in my description box in case you're interested. After all the reed was glued on, you could see the lip on the top and bottom of the can. So to camouflage that a little bit, I took the color Sandcastle by Dixie Belle and painted over the silver. In hindsight, I wish I would have put the reed vertically instead of horizontally, but it still looks super cute. Okay, this is the one I've been seeing all over the internet and of course in farmhouse style, but we aren't going that direction on this channel. To start, you wanna remove the bottom of the tin can. I have a can opener that doesn't leave sharp edges, but if you don't have one like this, make sure you file the metal down so you don't cut yourself. It is very sharp. If you want to add a hanger, I would suggest adding in the holes at this stage before closing up the bottom because we're making a floral pocket. I used my crocodile to add a hole on each side. Next, I need to close up the bottom and started squeezing the can at the bottom together. I thought this was gonna be a little more difficult, but it really wasn't too bad. If you have a vise, you could use that to easily crush the bottom in. I didn't find this to flatten the can any more than I had with my hands, but a hammer would work as well. I also squeezed the top in slightly to create a more oval shape, and then I painted the can in Sandcastle. Next, I took this silk screen stencil and applied it to the top and bottoms where the can is flat to give a more bohemian style to this floral pocket. I also took the white paint over the ridges of the can. I wanted this section to look a little more worn, so I added Sandcastle back over top on the high points. Now I can add the hanger using four millimeter macrame cord and decorate with florals. I love this take on the floral pocket, but let me know what you think.
Next up, I think this is my favorite from today. I'm taking this same polymer clay and rolling it out into a thin strand. I'm gonna start shaping the clay into a face. I love those line art faces I've seen on vases and artwork and thought this would be perfect for adding to the tin can. However, getting the face onto the can was a little bit difficult. I think because I was using one of the small cans so there wasn't much room to work with, it just took me some patience, but eventually I got it. Once I got the face on, I'm taking this liquid Sculpey, which is liquid clay that acts like a glue. This will bond my clay pieces to the tin can while it bakes in the oven. You could also bake the pieces and then glue them on afterwards. Next, I'm taking this stone spray paint in bleached stone and sprayed it over the entire can. This stuff works best if you pulse spray it rather than hold down the nozzle for a continuous spray. And that's it for this one. Next, I'm creating a textured look using paper towels and tissues. I poured some school glue in a bowl and watered it down. I would say it ended up being a one-to-one -one ratio of glue and water. And then I ripped up strips of paper towel. You want to make sure there are no straight edges on the paper towel. It will blend together better this way. And then I dipped each strip in the glue, wrung it out, and added it to the can. While adding the paper towel, I wanted it to have bunched up sections and not be flat. I let this layer dry and then added a second layer with the same process. After the second layer was dry, I started to paint, but I could really see the texture of the paper towel, like those little holes in it. And I didn't want that look, so I grabbed some tissues and laid those down right on top of the dried paper towel then took a paintbrush with that glue mixture and pat the tissues down. And I added two layers of the tissue to get a smoother look. Once the tissues were dried, I took the color Mud Puddle by Dixie Belle and painted the whole can. Let that dry and then with a chippy brush, I added Sandcastle, giving it a heavy dry brush look. The last color I added is white doing that same heavy dry brush technique and that's it for this one. I love how it has that faux stone type of look and it was so easy to create. All right, for this one, I am still determined to figure out the rust effect using these metal paints. But again, I struggled to make this work. I'm not gonna make you sit through the whole process again, but I tried these Modern Masters one last time since I got the copper one to work in my thrift flip video a few weeks ago. Here's what the can is looking like after about two hours. And there is really no rusting on it, just that one little spot, which is just super frustrating. I think it's I think it's this paint because I had no issues with that copper one. Um, I'll pop a picture up of what the copper one turned out like. That one looked really good. It patinaed really great with the spray. So I think I think it's just this iron one. I don't know. Maybe it's more paint in here than the actual metal. I'm not sure what's going on with this one, but it's it's definitely specific to the iron. So I went out to the Dixie Bell retailer by me and I picked up their patina paints. So I wanna see like what the difference is and how much better this is going to work. So let me show you what I got. For the paint, I got both the iron and I got the bronze as well. I really love bronze right now in my home. So I'm really debating if I wanna go the bronze route or the iron route because I already have the iron paint on here and that was what I was starting with. I don't know, we'll see. And then I also picked up, so they have two different types of patina sprays. There's a blue spray and then there's a green spray. Depending on 
like what kind of result you're looking for is which one you would use. So the blue says that it's for bronze and copper. The green says it's for bronze, copper, and iron. But then the girl at the store um, who owns the, the booth there, she told me to look down at the, I'll get a close up of this too, of at this little like image down here to see what the result is going to be. So you can see they're a little bit different for the blue and the green. So we're gonna do a little bit of experimenting to see how much better the Dixie Belle one is, first of all, because it's gotta be better than, than this mas modern masters one, which I'm still, uh, I'm pretty disappointed about because that stuff was not cheap at all. You have to use the primer. I didn't pick up the Dixie Belle primer just because it's the exact same thing that this primer is. All this does is it blocks the like acidity in these patina sprays from going like literally eating through the metal. So this is like the base layer that's going to stop it from continuing to just eat away at the piece. Let's open these things up and see if we can get a better result than this uh, just tiny little piece of not even what looks like rust. I ended up going with the iron to start and applied it the exact same way. So I'm gonna shake this up really well again and we're going to add the second coat. And I'm actually gonna try something a little different. I'm not gonna put it on the entire thing. I'm gonna put it in intentional spots of where I want the rust to be. And then I'm also gonna, I was just watching a few videos on other people using this stuff. And then I'm gonna take the green spray because this is the only one that will work on the iron. The blue spray will not work. It doesn't activate at all. But I'm gonna put the patina spray into a little souffle cup. I don't wanna actually spray it on because I don't actually like that look when it's like drippy. I want it to be more stippled on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some chippy brushes to stipple it on. And then once we do that, I'm gonna try and take some of the bronze paint then and get the bronze patina, the like green to also come out in some like select little areas. So we're gonna experiment. We're gonna see how this one turns out because I really love this stuff. I think it's such a cool idea and there's so much you can do with it. So I'd love to figure out how it actually works. I should have stopped here, but of course I kept going. I was trying to get in some of those lighter colors in here. And this is what it's looking like after a while, a hot mess. To try and save it, I took the bronze paint again and went over the entire can. To my surprise, when I came back a few hours later, for some reason, the areas with the original rust effect were showing through and actually gave that authentic look I was trying to create this whole time. Funny how things can work out like that sometimes. I have no idea why it did this. The last thing I wanted to do was add a raised stencil. And to do that, I used Dixie Bell mud, but spackle or joint compound works just as well in a palette knife to spread it on. Once the mud dried, I gave it a quick sand. The patina did bleed through, but I left it as is so it didn't look too new. And that was it for this one. Such a process to get here, but I'm glad I didn't give up. I hope you enjoyed my take on these tin can upcycles. That's all I got for you today and I'll see you in the next one.